Hey, hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about the subject of CPU PCIe lanes. Now, for those of you that followed this channel for a while, you'll know that more than anything, I talk about network attached storage. But it has to be said that network attached storage or NAS are effectively server and long term utilization optimized versions of computers, PCs, the things we've been using for a very long time. And one of the biggest factors in the build of a NAS or indeed a PC is to do with that CPU and in this case the CPU PCIe lanes. Now although we are of course talking tangentially about the lanes the PCIe that we use for upgrade cards this is a layer before that and it is a subject that's not actually touched on that much online and it's very important when looking at a NAS because so many times we look at a network attached storage device and then go oh it's pretty good but why didn't they add 10 GBE? Why didn't they add PCI upgrade cards? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they include NVMe? And chances are it comes down to those PCIe lanes. So whether you are watching this video as a NAS buyer or watching this video as someone that's building your own PC or wondering why a PC doesn't have certain features, hopefully this video will help you. Help you. But it's worth highlighting that this is a tremendously dumbed down uh, explanation. There's so much more technical stuff behind this and sometimes it's gonna get a bit caveman. So do bear with me. I'm trying to touch on an arguably more uh, technical subject in a very chewable crayon easy friendly manner, but let's get straight into it. So the P CPU PCIe lanes are effectively the lanes within a CPU for managing hardware components within a system. And when you look at any processor, and if you're looking at NAS servers, you're looking at Celerons and Xeons and P Pentiums, that sort of thing, you'll see uh, a figure along the line of the um, specifications, whether it directly from the likes of Intel or CPU Benchmark and CPU Geek and stuff like that, you notice figures along the lines of PCIe lanes and then CPU PCIe lanes. Now, the CPU PCIe lanes might be 16, 20, 24, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's one of the reasons uh, Xeons have become so popular. And these are the lanes that are effectively saying this CPU can handle this many trans uh, throughputs and pathways of data. Now, if you are going to be utilizing certain storage components, SATA drives, SAS drives, if you're going to be using NVMe components, if you're going to be using GPU cards or upgrade cards, 10G and more, these all occupy some of those lanes in conjunction with the main processor there. Now, different hardware components within NAS will occupy a certain percentage of those lanes from the P, uh, the CPU. Even the empty PCIe lanes that are afforded on a NAS or PC system, such as in some cases uh, the DS1621 um, Plus and Synology has a PCIe Gen 3 times 8 slot. That in itself is occupying a number of those PCIe lanes on the CPU. So think of those as external and the CPU internal lanes as internal. The amount of gr um, growth and the amount of hardware available on a NAS or PC system is heavily dictated by the CPU PCIe, PCIe lanes. It's also worth highlighting that those PCIe lanes, some of them are dedicated to different components. A number of CPUs will have dedicated GPU um, uh, PCIe lanes on the CPU that cannot be exceeded. So, for example, if they have uh, a Gen, if they have time 16 for a PCIe card, then chances are, if you install that card, you've got lots to play with. But if you're going to go into a situation where you're using multiple graphics cards, bear in mind that you can't exceed those dedicated um, graphics card or GPU uh, PCIe lanes. And the result will be that no matter how many cards you add, all they're doing is still living within the same bandwidth, but the card's utility is being reduced by a factor of the number of cards you install. So two cards, 50%, three cards, 33%, so on and so forth. Now, in terms of NAS, it's worth highlighting that NAS brands have found ways to get around this. Some ways that PC builds have been doing for years, and some of them very NAS specific. Because you may have noticed often when I talk about the likes of, say, Synology and QNAP, that two NAS brands with the exact same CPU inside, the QNAP will have 
HDMI out, the QNAP will have all these different features and functionality that the Synology doesn't. So why is that the case? How is the QNAP able to seemingly do more with the available PCIe lanes on the CPU than that of the Synology? And the reason is twofold. One, that often you will use something called PCH or chipset lanes. These are kind of uh, a separate arrangement of PCIe lanes presented to the core system with its own dedicated controller, its own processor there. Now these are typically a little slower uh, than the PCIe lanes of the main CPU. They're often referred to as PCH or just chipset lanes. And these will often be handed out to lesser Sy um, system process the likes of USB and stuff like that and this allows a lot more CPU lanes to be ready and available to the core system and it's more priority systems on top of that um, although this is something that's utilized by a lot of different brands and that doesn't just extend to NAS it's worth highlighting that with PCIe lanes on the CPU the components that are utilized within a NAS system because they occupy a number of those lanes in of themselves, some NAS brands, and again, um, QNAP have done this, and Acer Store in some of their recent releases, they present um, some of the hardware functions from within the NAS, but in a more reduced form. They're becoming a lot more transparent about this, but case in point, the NVMe slots. Now, the NVMe slots, uh, the M2 NVMe slots on the likes of the newer generation 73A series and 72X series, all, all the way going back to the 72XT series from QNAP, have got those M2 NVMe slots inside. But rather than being PCIe Gen 3 times 4 so 4,000 megs throughput there, they will be lesser versions, maybe at PCIe Gen 2 times 2 or Gen 3 times 1 or 3 times 2 ultimately each one providing much less than the NVMe that you're putting inside is actually capable of with most of the majority of PCIe Gen 3 M2 NVMe's arriving at Gen 3 times 4 or 4000 megs per second so the result is to include those extra features and facilities they're actually slightly more reduced versions and that's one of the other ways in which they get around um, uh, limiting the amount of hardware open to the end user in the hardware architecture. Now, Synology generally, as a rule of thumb, doesn't reduce a lot of those components. It has done a few times in the past when it's had to, but generally they give every component that you see inside their system the full unfiltered amount of PCIe lane and, and would be at PCH or it being CPU lanes that you would expect with PCIe slots at three times four and PCIe slots um, being dedicated to three times eight a lot of the time on their systems. And it's really about how the NAS system can take advantage of those PCIe lanes and give you ultimately the best value for your money. Now, we do look at some options where within a series, and this is another one that you should really look out for. You look at a product series from Synology or QNAP or any other brand, and when you see their systems, they say, oh, it's this CPU, it's this memory, it's that PCIe and stuff like that. But what you may not notice, unless you properly look at the specifications, is the two, the four, the six, and the eight bay in a single series will have slightly different specs because the available PCIe lanes, be it from the CPU or the PCH uh, chipset, has had to include the SATA bays. Um, uh, two SATA, um, uh, SATA bays take up two lanes, be it SSD or hard drive, those SATA lanes there. So the more you occupy in twos, the more go away. So, for example, in the 253D, it is, um, there's an expansion slot on that that's PCIe Gen 2 times 4, or for, uh, 2,000 megabytes per second. But the minute you move up, to the larger variants, it drops down to PCIe Gen 2 times 2 or 1000 megs throughput from the card to the board. So bear in mind that when you see specifications, make sure you properly look at the specific bay model of the one you're looking at when it comes to PCIe lanes. Because the smaller versions, you will generally find that the NAS manufacturer doesn't, you know, has been able to allow a much greater. Um, throughput internally on a smaller unit than a large unit because a large unit is going to be occupying more lanes there with the larger number of bays 
bear in mind that remember those PCIe lanes on the processor are going to be occupying uh, USB ports again with the newer generation USB 3.2 Gen 2 occupying two lanes with USB 3.2 Gen 1 the older variant at 5 gigabits per second occupying one lane M2 slots and SATA slots take up four lanes on the M2 and two lanes on the standard SATA there but bear in mind the M2 there being NVMe and finally again going back to GPU cards and GPU handling they were always the ones that would be the most demanding and that's why CPU lanes generally arrive with dedicated areas just for the GPU stuff there but this has been uh, you know, a fairly caveman uh, explanation of PCIe, PCIe CPU lanes, PCH uh, PCIe lanes, and general PCIe upgrade slots. I hope you found this video, and I hope uh, I hope you found this video helpful. And I hope this video helped explain why NAS brands choose certain CPUs over others, and why when a system arrives from some of these NAS brands, you look at the hardware and go, why didn't they include this, that, or the other? It, a lot of it comes down to those CPU lanes. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you are severely technical, I know I have brushed over things in a very caveman fashion. I've had to. This is too big a subject to cover without it getting too complex. It's very, very tough. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more. And I will see you next time.